this little excursion to this really beautiful hidden gem, it's time for some poker. But if you've never been there, you have to go there. Lake Las Vegas community, it's an incredible beautiful space. Just a few miles off the strip, it's like restaurants, bars, uh, the beautiful lake, there's a lot of and activities yeah. for me. Now time for poker, so cards, chips, whatever, let's go. Good morning everybody. So, we are on the Flamingo today. The plan is at 4 p.m. during the day, pure sunshine outside. We will play the $100 bounty. Uh, it's my first time also in Flamingo. Uh, until last week I saw there's no poker in Flamingo. Then I saw a lot of uh, vlogs about it. So I said, okay, let's go check it out. Because the 1-2 game is uh, pretty deep and a lot of action. It's what, what, what I heard. So this will I definitely will check out later. But first, now the tournament, $100 bounty. I have no idea what to expect. So just jump in and let's see what's going on. Let's go. Okay, that was my tournament experience. Uh, yeah, went quite uh, fast. This tournament is based to, to be fast, so it's a bounty tournament, the people punting in. We have totally recreation players, like, you cannot call them fish, they're like, they're like the status before the fish. So when somebody's coming to the table and asking, uh, excuse me, where's seat eight? Then you know what's going on. Uh, spoiler, he was actually the guy who also kicked me out of the tournament, but it doesn't matter. Um, yeah. I had, to, there's no hand we can go over with, there was like, I had in the four, first four or five hands, I had like ace king, ace queen, pocket nines, and nine seven suited, the only good hand, the rest was like always king three, jack four, six two, all the time, <clears throat> so uh, uh, one of the players left uh, on my left, he was, uh, he was a totally to calling station, he was punting off his chips, and my goal was at least to collect one bounty from him. And uh, actually, I got two times in, all in with him, like perfectly played uh, the perfect size. I played the pre-flop or like on the on the flop to get him all in. And uh, one time I uh, he shot, I call, I have pocket nines. I was hoping he do, he's doing that, so I got pocket nines. He has pocket tens. He wins. Okay, he had like five big blinds or something. I had 25 at this moment. Then. Uh, I don't know, like one level later, uh, same thing. He has about nine big blinds left again. And uh, I have ace nine suited on a button. I raise up, he's in small blind. I want him to shove in. He shoves, big blind folds, and uh, I call, of course. And I have ace nine, and of course, he has ace 10, of course. And holds again. And uh, this brought me down to uh, 10 big blinds. And then, very next hand, I have ace four. and. I shove in, the blinds were already 400, 800, so it's so fast, 20 minute levels. Uh, the blinds double up all the time, so it's so fast. And I got called from the from the guy I mentioned before, he had pocket fives and nothing on the flop, nothing turn, nothing river, and that's it. No worries, it was just a $100 tournament, just wanted to check it out for the vlog. So uh, my goal is uh, to play the 1-2 now. Uh, I just went to eat, um, and now I, there's no waiting list right now, so it's perfect. I jump in on the 1-2. Let's go! Okay guys, let's make a quick review from some hands from this session. Unfortunately I didn't film them, but they are quite interesting. Okay, the first hand I was really involved in, I'm in a big blind, it limps around all the way to me. I check my option with queen 4 off and an effective stack of $300. We go 5 way to the flop, which comes queen 7 3 with 2 hearts. Pot is $10 and it all checks around. The turn is a 4 of hearts, which gives me 2 pair, but also a third heart on the board. I lead out for $10 to see what's out there. Middle position player calls and the rest fold. River is an 8, pot is $30. I continue with $15 because I think my two pairs are still good and I can get money from any queen or 7. Uh, instead of calling, the middle position player raises to $37. Actually, easy. This, this is an easy fold because it smells like any small weak flush or maybe a better two pair like queen 8 or queen 7 or even maybe 6-5 for straight. 
But since his race is so small and he also can do it with King Queen, Queen Jack, maybe 8 7, which are all beat. So I just call and he shows me Queen 8. Yeah, nice river, sir. In the next hand, I have Ace 10 in clubs. There's a button straddle going on under the gun limbs. I'm under the gun plus one. I raise it up to $20 to isolate the limber or the button straddler. It falls all the way to the button, which folds. Small blind calls, big blind and the limper folds. So not the way I was expecting, but it is like it is. And we go heads up to the flop, which comes Jack 9-3 or Rainbow. He checks over to me. And since the small blind range consists of a lot of Broadway cards and smaller pocket pairs, I don't see him to get him off, off his hand in the, on the flop. So I rather check behind in, uh, in position. So that's what we do. The turn brings an ace. He checks to me again. <clears throat> now it's time to go for some value. I bet $25. He calls. The river brings another nine and pairs the board. He checks again. And now I bet $55 and he folds quite quickly. Now at the end of the review, I would say my uh, bet size is not optimal. Um, I would way rather prefer a bet size about 40-ish percent uh, to get a call from any smaller pocket pairs between 8s and 8s and 4s. Or maybe even uh, a weak jack like jack 8, 7, something like this. Or king queen as a bluff catcher. Or I go really polarized about 80 to 120 percent pot size bet. To get a call from any weaker ace or jack like queen jack, king jack, jack 10 for example, uh, any draw will fall to any bet size anyway, so that would be a way better play. But at the end I'll take this $102 part and move on. One more hand, I have 7-6 off, there's a button straddle going on, we have two callers, I'm in a small blind, I call as well, big blind calls and the button checks his straddle option. So we go five ways to the flop, which comes as perfect as you can get, 8-5-4. I flop the perfect nuts, he checks around to the button, which puts in a bet of $15. Even if there's merit for just call and hope that somebody else is calling as well. On this particular board, I don't think that too many people will connect to this board, so I'd rather raise it up now and try to build a bigger pot. So I raise to $40, like expected everybody folds and the button calls. Turn it to three, now it's a good time to stay polarized. So I bet $75 to try to attack all two pairs sets or maybe one pair holding with a with a draw. He calls, the river brings an ace. So I bet polarized again, almost pot size, $225. But unfortunately he quickly folds. So I guess he has a holding like 10-8, 9-8, 8-7 or maybe 6-5. Uh, yeah. But still happy when you flop the nuts and it holds all the way through, it's always a good feeling. Okay, because I couldn't get enough footage for the vlog for the first time I've been at Flamingo, I went there again about two weeks later and this one didn't went that well. Let me show you how I lose $300 in three hands and not even one orbit. The first two hands I got dealt in on the table I throw away, then I'm under the gun plus one with ace jack in hearts, I open up the action for $10, the low jack calls which is a small stack and a really weak player which I could see right away in the first few hands and the button calls as well which is the big stack on the table with a little bit over $400. The flop comes 963 or rainbow and we all check and we go to the turn. And the turn is a 3, now I'm bet $15 to see what is out there if anybody holds anything. The low jack calls quite quickly and like you can see in the back the button already prepared a race. And it is a min race to $30. Since I have nothing, for me it's an easy fold because I don't want to call and then got reshuffed from the low jack. So for me I fold and the low jack makes the call and has not even $30 behind. The river is a 10 and now the low jack checks and the big blind puts him all in with his last $30 and the low jack calls quite quickly and let's check the hands. It's pocket threes for a turn set and 9-4 off for two pair on the flop. The very next hand I didn't film because I was still taking notes from the hand before. I'm under the gun with ace nine off. I open up for $10. The logic calls and the cutoff calls as well. The blinds fold. Cutoff is the guy with the hand before with pocket threes. Flop comes queen queen six with two spade. I see a bet for $15. The logic folds and now the cutoff put in again a min race to $30. 
This time I call because I have the ace and spades with some backdoors. I have one over card and one over to the, to the six and he cannot always have it. The turn brings a nine which gives me a pair. I check over to him and he puts in another bet of $30. Pretty small which gives me a good price. So I call. The river brings an eight. I check over to him and now he puts in a bet of $50. This absolutely smells like value. Maybe he really holds a queen. Maybe a flop full house. Maybe he has jacks or tens and thinks that's the way how you play it. Finally at the end I ending up folding and he shows queen 5 off. Queen 5. Really? Okay on to the third hand which is actually also the last hand. My big blind and small blind I didn't play. But somehow the super fish from the first hand came back with hundred dollars and was able to double it up in these two hands. So I also reload and put another hundred dollars to my stack just to cover him. And then comes the button. I have ace jack off. There are three limpers to me. I raise it up to twenty dollars. The small blind, the super fish calls, and the second limper calls as well. So we go three ways to the flop, which comes jack seven seven rainbow. So finally it looks like a good hand with two fishes and some ships behind. So a dream spot actually. The small blind checks and the second limper donk leads for $20. I just call because I want the small blind in the game as well and he calls as well. The turn is an ace so even the board gets better and better because now I can get full value from all the aces. And funny enough the small blind now donk leads for $20. The limper calls and now I have to start to put him on ranges. The small blind, the super fish can hold any ace, any weak ace and to start to lead out. Uh, if he holds a 7 he definitely would check raise the flop. And uh, the second limper, I put him on a weak jack, something between queen jack till jack 8 and like to stay in the game. If he holds a 7 then I definitely see him raising the turn. So I see myself far ahead of both of them. So I raise to $80 to isolate one of them and to blow up the pot. The super fish in the small blind calls quite quickly and the limper folds after some time of tanking. So it's a dream spot. The small blind has about a little bit over $100 left in his stack and when he checks I put him all in but he's faster than me, he jams all in, I snap call, I'm happy to collect the pot but somehow he shows me jack 7 off for flop full house. <sighs> yeah. Yeah like you can see Flamingo definitely ain't my favorite spot. It's full of weak recreational players but somehow I'm not capable of beating them. So if you're a beginner, go there, it's uh, definitely a very good spot for you guys, it's a really small game, there's a lot of limping going on, so if you're new to the game, definitely go there, it's a good spot, but if you're like more like in, want to become professional, want to go full time playing poker for a living, then it's definitely not the right spot to go. But uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, thank you very much for watching and staying uh, until the end, and yeah, I wish you a good day and see you next time, see ya!